If you want to learn how to build an automation that tackles all of your task dependencies, look no further than this video. I'm going into detail on how to build a system that allows you to change one date and then all of the other pieces that are reliant on that date will also update. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about how we do that, definitely check out our website. I will include a link below, but also uh, don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course. It's gonna get you up to speed quickly and easily using Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into the whole point of today's video, and it is all about task dependency. So taking a look at my screen here, you'll see I've got a fairly simple database structure, and the heart of what we're talking about is really in automations. But really quickly, let's just outline what we've got. I'm basically imagining that we've got projects that connect to tasks. So pretty straightforward thing here, and every task you'll notice has a start, and an end date and a duration, right? So if we know any two of these pieces, we can always calculate the third piece. So we can just say, hey, if it starts on this day, it has to end on this day or you know whatever the case may be. So uh, in this particular case though, we're gonna say we put in a start date and we put in a duration of days. And that is how long this particular task should take. So if you think about working on a project and maybe you break it up into different segments, these are like each of those segments. And then we're able to calculate the end date from there. Now all these end dates might not uh, line up correctly to the untrained eye. So if you're looking at this saying, wait a second, Gareth, you've got a start date on 1013, but five days later it says 1020, that doesn't make sense. Well, the reason for that is because we are using a work day uh, formula here. So the workday formula, if you haven't used it before, actually will calculate the next workday. So it doesn't count weekends and optional holidays that you can plug into the formula. So in this particular case, I'm, I'm imagining that we just work or our business runs Monday through Friday. And so I don't wanna count weekends and have them kind of mess up our calculations. And also just to take this a step further, you know, of course I'll, I'll paste this formula down below the video if you wanna use it for yourself. But the other part here is I'm running an if statement. I don't want this formula to output errors. And in the case where we have missing information, the formula would output errors. So I'm basically saying only if you have a start date and a duration uh, of period there, then and only then do I want you to calculate this work date, uh, you know, end date, right? So that's the, that's the gist of it. Now, at the end of the day, what this is doing is if we change a start date or if we change a duration, then of course the end date will automatically also update. But that's a really important concept to get, you know, dialed in on, but the the next part is the dependency part. So you'll notice that we also, you know, link it to a project. So a task usually is assigned to a project. This is really nice in the case where you have the same types of tasks over and over again. You definitely want to be able to break it out by project and get it grouped up appropriately. But in this case, the real meat and potatoes is living at the dependent on field. And what this is doing is we're linking this particular task, in this case, this task number two, which is our scoping task, we're linking it back to the onboarding task and saying that for this task to be complete, that is the scoping task, we need to first complete onboarding. And this happens a lot when you're working on different tasks within a company, right? You'll say, well, we've got these 10 things that we have to do, but I can't do thing eight until thing seven is done. And I can't do thing seven until thing six is done, etc." And so these are all waiting on things before them to take place and only then will these other pieces go into action. Now, quick pause here. I do wanna point out that I am using straight dates. I'm not trying to break this out by hour. That's a much more complicated formula. You're certainly welcome to experiment with that if you wanna take a shot at it. But ultimately, you know, in, in this example, I'm, I'm imagining that we're just working on that thing for a certain number of days, not hour by hour by hour, and micromanaging the, you know, an eight hour shift. So. The last part here, of course, is our dependency end date. And what we're using here is a roll-up or 
could be a lookup field, but in our case, I chose a rollup and I'll tell you why when we get there. But the rollup field is looking at the dependency that we've established for this task and it's bringing back the end date for that dependency. And it's bringing back the max of these. And this is one of the advantages to using a rollup. It's by using the max, we could actually assign multiple dependencies for a task. And only when the last of those is completed, the max date, that would then be brought in. Okay, so at, you know, just really quickly looking this over, we say, well, this, this particular task, task two, is scoping. And it relies on onboarding to be complete. Onboarding was done or should be done on 10.8, right? And that 10.8 is coming from right here, October 8th. Similarly, if we look at the third one here, let's say we have work part one, whatever that is. <laughs> That's dependent on scoping. And scoping, we know, ends on 10.13. And so that is the date that's getting brought back here. So really, that roll-up field is just looking at the dependencies and it's saying, well, when are these dependencies going to be done? Okay, so now let's talk about the automagic of this whole system. It comes in with an Airtable automation. And we are using the trigger that says when a record is updated in a table. So basically, we are able to look at the tasks table and we're looking, you know, we, of course, we have to choose a view. In this case, I only have the one view called all records. And then we get to tell it what field we want to watch to see uh, when we want to trigger this automation. You can choose one or more fields. And the one that we're looking for is that roll up field, the dependency end date. So basically, if an end date changes for whatever reason that something is reliant on, so that dependency end date, if that updates or changes, that's what's going to fire this automation. And what do we want to have happen? Well, we want to, this is the next or the, the step in the automation, the action step is where we are saying, well, that very record that just had the dependency end date change, we now need to take that dependency end date and make it be the new start date for this particular record, right? So in order to do that, we're bringing in that dependency end date. Now I mentioned earlier, I didn't use a lookup field intentionally. It does have the advantage of saying we can now link multiple dependencies to something. But the other big thing is we can't use a lookup field inside of an Airtable automation. So that's kind of a drawback right now. There's a workaround for that. You can just write a quick formula. But using the rollup field was like a two birds, one stone situation. So once we turn that automation on, really what it's doing, you know, if I were to put it into plain terms, is it saying, hey, look, if, you know, for this particular one, work part two, we know that work part one has to be done first. Work part done is going to end on 1020. So we can start work part two on 1020. So really all we're doing, if we were to do it manually, would be to copy that 1020 and paste it over there. But with the automation, now we can have all of that change for us. So let's suppose that this project got moved up a week. Maybe we projected starting it on 107, but then we found out that we could actually start it on 101. Well, all I have to do is make that change and sit back and relax. And you're going to notice that some automations start triggering in the background. And really what it's doing is it's saying, hey, wait a second. We realize now that the thing that we were waiting on for this particular task is now done. So now we can update as well. And ultimately, we're going to see all of these tasks over the next you know, couple of, of moments here update with new dates. So all of it's getting updated and all I had to do was change one date. And because these things are all linked out appropriately, just took care of all of them just like that. So super slick automation. Definitely let me know in the comments below how you are leveraging these Airtable automations. And if you have any questions or extra tips around how we might be able to make this better, I am all ears. Hope you found this to be really helpful. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.